Today my guest is Daniel Jungleman Kate. Daniel is one of the most celebrated performers in the entire poker industry. He's won over 5.7 million playing live tournaments and over 11 million plus playing online cash games. That's pure profit, folks. And today he's going to talk about his life story. He's going to talk about the values that guide him in life. He's going to talk about his purpose, his vision, and the strategies that led him from making 400 bucks playing poker online to playing in the biggest games in the world. So Daniel, tell me, what, what did you want to be when you was growing up? Uh, I think I originally wanted to be like a professor or something like that because I like, like to, like to, uh, I like to just, uh, how do I explain? Um, well, first of all, I like to, sh I like to uh, be really smart about stuff. I, I, I prided myself in that. And, uh, and it seemed like uh, you know, science and uh, like was something that'd be really interesting to do and be fun to do. Uh, I think at one point I wanted to be something like that, but uh, I didn't love academics nearly enough for to do anything like that. I was going to ask you what what changed. You know, you you want to be a professor and then you become a poker player. What what changed that kind of destroyed that dream? Was it is it just growing up thinking this isn't for me? What was it? Uh, well, a couple of things. Firstly, I think that I didn't like um, I didn't like studying and learning quite as much to be like really a professor to be yeah I didn't like I just didn't like just learning new things just for the sake of learning uh, uh, enough and actually I, I found that I'd like to be competitive and I like to learn a bit but not not but usually for some purpose so um, playing poker you know you you, uh, you can learn but it's like to to be able to like win so there's like some purpose in my mind that's less open-ended than Necessarily learning new things, or, um, or uh, well, I guess it's 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 more it's more uh, what's the word? Is the word tact for it? The the incentive is more tact for me. I think is what I'm trying to say. It's well, more is, clear. Is there an is there an enjoyment value there as well? So like, there's more enjoyment in learning about poker than there is enjoyment in learning about being a professor because of like the end goal is more. I don't know. M more what you value? Well, I think for me, uh, um, for me, it was more like winning was, was there's more, there's some enjoyment in learning and there's more enjoyment in like winning and like competing. Being competitive? Yeah. You've always been competitive? Uh, yeah, I would say so. Pretty competitive. Not, not with everything, but with some things like with the video games and things like that. Uh, poker's a bit more fun as far as like playing games is concerned. <laughs> And thinking back through your life, I know this is a tough question, but can you think of a, a time in your life where it's been incredibly challenging and, and how did you overcome that moment and what, is, what have you learned from that experience moving forward? Um, I've had a few things that were pretty challenging. I don't think, I don't think as challenging as like some other people because I, I know of, I hear these stories of like guys from Mexico moving to the US and working every hour of the day to build like a future for their family, which is like crazy to me. I've never had to do anything that crazy, but uh, I mean, you know, I was like a bit of a loner back in college and didn't really have any friends. And uh, uh, I was just grinding, playing poker in my room, playing small stakes and trying to win. I mean, I remember that. Um, I was learning things online. And for me, it was helpful to just see progress. Like uh, I remember, like when I got my full total balance up to like four hundred dollars, that felt pretty good. Even though that's like like four hundred dollars, who even cares? I grinded it. Ten dollars didn't go to four hundred dollars. Like that alone felt really good. So yeah, just relative progress helped a lot. I mean, there are other times too. Like made a bad investment that threatened to maybe even send me. Well, maybe not sure if it'll send me bankrupt, but like take a large portion of my net worth, and I just worked really hard to get through it, I guess. And uh, that one, I think I, uh, I think I just just put in a ton of effort until um, till I was out of it, basically, uh, for the bad investment that it was cost me a ton of money. When you say when you say you got out of it, do you mean you got out of the uh, the money that you lost, like you recruited your money or you got out of the deal? I got out of the deal. And what did that what did that deal teach you about life that you're not going to stick your foot in it again today? Uh, 
Yeah, that deal taught me not to make uh, very big investments that I don't know very about, very much <laughs> yeah. about, unless I'm really, really know about. And actually, it taught me not to trust uh, trust the specifically the abilities of people as much un until it's proven, because that was really my major fallacy. There is that I trusted uh, some friends of mine who's to do to be able to execute properly, and they didn't. And and when that deal started to crumble, they couldn't help me, which was really frustrating. Uh, so, um, yeah, it taught me that you really have to be selective with how, where you place your trust, not just in terms of, not, not so much in, I mean, in terms of who will scam or who's like honest, but just who is able to do what they're going to say to do. I think the second thing is more important because most of the money that I've lost with people is just uh, is just from people like not living up to what they promised. To be honest, is that was like a, an important lesson I think I learned. And when when you said that um, when you were younger, you were more of a loner doing the sit and goes on your own type of thing. Was was that uh, making friendships? Was that a challenge for you? And um, if so. How, how are you today? Because I guess friendships and relationships and leveraging them in poker is really important. Um, uh, yeah, it was definitely a really challenge back then just because I was just a bit too, too whatever. <laughs> uh, and today, uh, today it's, it's, I don't, yeah, it's not, not quite the same issue, I think. Um, What's the exact question? Did you have to did you have to work on it? Because I, I imagine getting from four hundred dollars sit and goes to the highest stakes games in the world, somewhere along the line, you have to leverage relationships to yeah. get there, right? And yeah. if you're struggling at some point to uh, develop friendships and communicate, that could be quite tough. Like, yeah. did you did you do any anything proactively to uh, improve your skills in that area, or did it just naturally become more confident? Um. I did do some some stuff proactively, but not like directly related to just specifically making friendships. So I, w I didn't like go out and say, "I'm gonna I'm gonna make some friends today" or something like that. It's more like uh, more like I learned things about people and learned things about like the ways that I was behaving that uh, that just were not very effective. Or I mean, learned things about people to deal with them a little bit more effectively. And then also, I mean, that was more gradual, more like I made mistakes with. People that were my friends, or and saw like, oh, I did this wrong, so I should do this in future, and therefore I should also do this. I should be nice in this this way that I fucked up <laughs> in so, another way. It's almost like a video game, right? Well, aspects. There's some aspects that are similar between between them. It's not really. It's it's definitely not quite a video game because dealing with people and not uh, not like some abstract like thing that exists only on in the virtual world, um, and then. Uh, what else? And then, yeah, some other behaviors re relating to myself that, uh, that like, kind of help solve that problem that, that weren't so great or, or could be improved on that helped solve that problem over time as well. So indirectly, yes, I worked on it a bit. And um, moving on to values a little bit, what are, what are the core values that guide your life? I know it's a complicated question because a lot of times we don't think about it. But, yeah. Um, have you given any thought? Uh, I actually have given that some thought. Um, and that's a that's a pretty deep question. Uh, well, one one that was a value of mine, uh, and actually I don't live up to it as much as I'd like to, is just to be rational about my actions. Mm -hmm. um, in poker, that's super important because if you're not rational, you're going to lose money. <laughs> but uh, also, um, I think that if people are are truly rational, they. Uh, uh, the quality of everyone's life benefits because um, it's it's how do I explain like to me for me to be rational is to do like the right thing even though it's even though the right thing pretty much no matter what even though it's it's uh, it's hard and the the implications of that are pretty far reaching I think uh, as far as like even like eating healthy which now I'm doing at least and. Uh, uh, and just treating people in a better way. Uh, and and those, that's something that I really value a lot. Uh, uh, I'm definitely not perfect in that, that avenue. Uh.
but, but, but pretty you, good, perfect. But you know, you are it. aware, you are aware though of these are the values that I would like to live my life by. Yes. And and but you're measure, you're checking in every now and then, and you're realizing I am in some areas and I'm not in other areas. Yeah. You're which, very aware. Well, uh, yeah. Um, I mean, sometimes I'm more aware than others. Uh, admittedly, I've definitely made mistakes in that avenue also, which brings to the next value, which would be the integration, which would be integrity, which is the integration between your values and who you actually are. Like, it's not very valuable to uh, to state a value and not be able to follow through on it, similar to someone who promises something and can't deliver. Uh, so I also value that. Uh, so it's not quite the same thing. And then I think lastly, uh, I mean, I guess this is this happened more over time is just to, uh, I think one other thing that I value is just something like progress or like ambition. Hmm. Uh, in poker, in, in poker, I really, uh, I, I think I really have that. But uh, yeah, just the, the, like the, it's, it's, I think the simplest way to describe it is just like the, like the pressure to progress. That's, that's the only way I can really describe it, just to keep going forward and trying to get better and better. So growth, growth yeah. is a, a good value of yours. Yeah, yeah, growth is a, is a more, is, a, is maybe even a better word. So, you know, there are people in the world that think this time of ours today is the worst ever. There's some that think that it's the safest ever. When you look at the world, Daniel, what, what do you see? What, what, is, what do you think of what's going on today? Um, I think that, the world is becoming increasingly complicated for sure. That's definitely true. It's the most complicated it's ever been. Um, I think that the it's it's sort of like the world is playing like a game where it the stakes are higher than ever. Uh, where the uh, impacts of everyone's decisions um, could have like more far reaching consequences, like could mean the end of the world or whatever. I think that's definitely true. I, I do actually think that there's currently more peace in the world. Uh, I think actually the world is in a better state, even though it doesn't appear to be the case. Because, I mean, if you go back in history, there are all sorts of wars going on in like China or whatever. Whereas like lately, I mean, there's still a bunch of wars going on, but there aren't too many like massive wars. Uh, well, in the Middle East, there's still tons of wars, but. But, uh, there's no World War One. There's no there's this casualty rate. I guess what you're talking about. But yeah. do, do you do you do you get to see the real world though? Because like you know, you the lifestyle is almost like jump on a jet plane, end up in some casino, play for God knows how many hours, do the same thing again. Do do you find that you sometimes miss the world and, and are living in a little bit of a bubble? How do you manage that? Uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, I think I live in a little affair, like in um in like Never Ever Land with uh, a. <laughs> Like Peter Pan and yeah, uh, like Willy Wonka and his chocolate factory. Yeah, that's what how I feel like I live in. Like, and then I go back to uh, go to the, like I've been to Af Africa, like Mozambique and uh, some other places, and seen people live in huts. It's like no electricity and stuff. It's really crazy to me. Or even even just like people who work a nine to five job it seems like insane to me now. Uh, it's, it doesn't feel like at all the same place. Uh, when I go back to like where I grew up and people are working for ten dollars an hour. Well, even your family, I imagine the yeah. the, the, the difference in kind of uh, wealth uh, and lifestyle is should uh, I imagine is very different. Yeah, is that is that difficult to kind of like get back and see mom and dad and just uh, just delve straight back into life after you know playing for so many millions on a poker table? I wouldn't say difficult. It might be difficult to not be pressured to uh, go out and do more things, but it, I don't think it's necessarily difficult to, to go back for a couple of days. Uh, it's definitely, it's sort of, it's sort of a, it reminds me of what my past was though. I guess money produces a lot of uh, difficult moral dilemmas, doesn't it? Like my, my mom needs a new hip. Do I buy her a hip, you know, or, or do you just stay afar and let her buy her own hip? Like, I mean, do you, do you get into those kind of dilemmas? I've been into a couple of things like that, but not for like extraordinary, not for extremely large amounts of money, for like, like a few thousand or something like that. I mean, for that, if it's like something, something important like health, I think it's fine to spend money. If it's just wants a new Louis Vuitton bag, maybe that's another. 
<laughs> Never questioned. Um, what, what is the one thing that you set out this year that you wanted to achieve? Have you achieved it? If not, why not? Um, well, let's see. I didn't, I didn't really have a specific goals for this year. I wanted to uh, be more involved in cryptocurrency. Uh, I guess lately I also wanted to get my health uh, on track and like be more consistent in the gym uh, and stuff, which I have been. I have actually done that. Um, I've done surprisingly a good job of that because historically it was always a problem for me to go to the gym multiple times a day, a, a week, especially with my schedule, and also uh, eat healthy, which was really a hard thing for me. Somehow I was able to do that. But uh, yeah, with the cryptocurrency thing, um, I wanted to do that, but then I realized like how much work it would actually be to do something proficient with cryptocurrency and that uh, some friends of mine actually are pretty adept at at doing stuff with that. It's going back to uh, wanting to be a professor again and realizing that, hang on a minute, this is gonna take a lot of work yeah. to do this. You, you're feeling the same thing with the crypto, are you? Um, uh, there's there's a subtle difference. It's that in crypto, the incentive is a little bit more clear in that I'd, I'd be wanted to make money and has like some more real world, real world implications than necessarily being a professor. Like I imagine a professor will, uh, will just like do a bunch of research and maybe make some like breakthroughs, but it won't, I mean, yeah, like it's there, it seems that their incentives are, the way that incentives are aligned with their payoffs is a bit different. Uh, it seems more like they're really into learning in the first place mm -hmm. or, or teaching, which I'm interested in, but I'm not, uh, not so interested that uh, I would want to, um, want to do that full time. And, and also to forego the opportunity of like making money from what I'm doing. What what change are you ultimately trying to create in the world, Daniel? Uh, well, right now I'm right now I've been mostly doing selfish things, but uh, uh, eventually I'd like to do something different, uh, maybe for nonprofit that has more far-reaching uh, consequences uh, that would improve the world in a ideally in a systematic way. Uh, in a, a systematic or systemic, I mean, is what I meant to say, it's just systemic way for the better. Um, what I mean is, like, you can give money to charity, but this doesn't seem to solve the problem of the fact that people need money for charity because people just keep giving money for charity, so it's like something good, but it's not something that changes, like, or solves real problems. Uh, I would like to eventually do something that would be able to actually solve problems like on a larger scale. And then that, that, that moves me into kind of more of the vision of, of, of Daniel Jungerman's life. You know, do you, you said you didn't really set out to have any goals this year uh, other than the cryptocurrency thing. But yeah. what about three to five years out? Are you, are you thinking that far in advance? Um, a little bit, yeah. Uh, I haven't done too many things. Admittedly, I haven't done too many things to like really realize that goal. Like, that's like a really long-term goal, I would say. Uh, like currently, I've uh, yeah. Currently, I've just been some, mostly just been some poker player and give a little bit to charity or whatever. Mm. But uh, yeah, lo mostly so far, my actions have been fairly selfish. I would say, unfortunately, in spite of the goal that I just mentioned. I'm, I, I mean, I guess that depends if the if the vision is to create a nonprofit, then playing at the tables and being selfish with that money for an ult ultimately altruistic uh, reason yeah. is justifiable. Let's say that. I like it's, that one. It's yeah, yeah. You could say that it's justifiable. I mean, if you use the money eventually for something, although that seems like something that can be, it seems like a situation where I could, I mean, I could like end up like doing this and then rationalizing. How do I explain? I could end up like rationalizing selfish behavior for like. I'm trying to think of how to explain it, but it isn't necessarily. I, I haven't, I haven't lived up to the goal. Basically, is what yeah. I'm saying. And I can. It's like a, there's a chance that I don't uh, follow through on what I'm saying, there's which is there's a chance. There's a chance that you could lose ev everything, and then you don't have the money to realize to or to invest, for example. Um, that too, but it's also just I could end up just playing poker and not doing, and just fucking going on vacation or whatever, and not really doing anything, and then oh, I'm, I'm, I have money, and now I'm relaxing. Uh, so, forget so that goal or something. Is what I'm saying. That could happen. Is there a number? Is there a number then? Because we talked, we were talking in dinner yesterday, weren't, weren't we? About, 
you know, the World Series of Poker bracelet thing is not really something that interests you. If you're Cristiano Ronaldo, you want to win the Ballon d'Or or whatever, you know, um, and with yourself, because those accolades are not really there for you, is there a number? Is there a, 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 a belief in yourself of when you get to a certain position that you believe in and around your live cash games, where you are the best maybe? What is it? What is going to eventually lead to you stepping away? Uh, to make me step away? Um, I don't know if I would, I, it wouldn't be, if I were to step away, it would not be because of some an amount that I had, I had won, it'd be more uh, because I'd want to focus on something else. There's no like real amount that I have in mind. It's more, I want to focus my efforts somewhere else. So you still love the game? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Um, uh, I would, yeah, I, I guess you could say that. Uh, I love it mostly. I guess I should love it more just because actually it probably challenges, me. it should challenge me to uh, try to behave more rationally with my behavior. Uh, I guess it's like it's like a little bit, in terms of behavior, it's a bit of a test to behave rationally, which I've actually failed. In terms of, um, in terms of responding to loss, or responding, my behavior, not my actions, not my decisions at the poker table. Uh, yeah, I've failed in my uh, behavior to, uh, to act appropriately, let's put it that way, or to act effectively. We're talking about tilt. Well, if... yeah, I've like thrown cards and things like that. Cards is just a failure that I never So, so that, that refers to one of the challenges you have in life. So controlling your emotions when you're in and around the poker table. What other challenges are you battling with in life that you want to overcome? Um, let's see. Well, that's definitely one of the bigger ones. Uh, time management to some extent. Um, I want to be a bit more efficient with how I uh, um, manage my time and try to use more of it productively. Um, also just to determine how much time I want to spend uh, doing things that aren't, that just doing things for fun. Like that's a bit, that's something that I, I often struggle with, is how much fun do I really want to have compared to how much time I want to spend uh, being productive or whatever. Um, what else? Uh, to some extent with relationships too, uh, with uh, women. Uh, uh, I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> Challenging, yeah, I'm with you on that one. Um, you are one of the most recognized world stars of poker, both online and live. What are, the, what are the main tools and resources that you would recommend to people? It doesn't have to be poker, it could be life in general. Like, what do they need to do? What do they need to be reading? What do they need to be learning if they want to reach uh, the very pinnacle of where you are right now? Um, so you're, you're not just referring to poker, or you're, you're referring to anything? I, I believe quite strongly that obviously you need to learn a lot of technical aspects of poker, but I yeah. think to be a truly great poker player like you are, you 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 are effectively in a business. You're effectively a, a startup. You're a business, you know. And, and I think that there's a lot of life skills that go into that as well. So I'm interested in in kind of more of the life skills than than I I use PIO solver or whatever, you know. Yeah. Like you know, how do you become jungle man? You're a brand, you're a machine, you're not just a human being, you know, mm -hmm. not taking away that, your emotions from me, but you know what I mean? Um, well, I think uh, with regards to learning the technical aspects, there's like some, there are some traits really that you, you kind of need, like firstly to, uh, to work really hard at it. Uh, that's obviously the case, but also not just that, also to like make sure that you're applying the things that you learn, which, um, still pretty vague but I think there are some like you can like get feedback from your friends for example uh, there's there are a number of things you can do that are related to common sense uh, to make sure that you're actually improving which is important because if you work really hard you feel like endless hands and you never try to improve you're never going to go anywhere um, so uh, so yeah so you have to do things to make sure you improve at least for me it was more natural because I was always thinking about poker and whatever but um, what else? Uh, yeah, definitely making sure you're improving in some way is, is pretty important or, uh, and putting in a ton of effort, uh, I guess part of it is just doing things that you 
part of it really is just doing things that are need to be done when you don't want to do them. I mean, as simple as that is, it really is the, sh the short truth. And then uh, what else? For poker and stuff, money management to, like for at least personally, I always just reinvested money into poker. I didn't really like splurge very much at all. Uh, and I think that's more uh, long-term profitable than, I think just reinvesting the money is more long-term profitable than like cashing out and going crazy and things like that. Uh, definitely money management f to be successful. Uh, I think also having a, a good network of friends would be that are, that are, as relates to making sure you're improving, have a good, good network of friends that are actually honest with how you're, if you're actually improving, would be beneficial to a lot of people, uh, and myself included, um, and the friends that are actually encouraging you and not trying to do, trying to undermine you some weird way. Uh, think things like that. What else? Uh, some elements are things that are harder to have. Like for me, I remember I was fortunate in that uh, when I was in college, I had like loads of free time and I didn't have much of a social life. So I just played poker and tried to learn at it. So I invested a lot of the, a lot of my time into that during that period. But I think a lot of people have the issue that they don't have, they already have some responsibility and it's hard for them to have like enough time for them to really work on something a lot to make like real progress. But I think one important element would be to uh, uh, to allocate, if, if possible, to allocate a lot of time. It, it would be harder if someone like has to have a job or if they have like a kid or something like that. Um, how does poker make you feel? How does poker make me feel? Uh, a bunch of things. It makes me feel, losing makes me feel frustrated. Sometimes it, sometimes it even feels at least temporarily, it's, it sounds stupid to say, but like the world is like turned against me. As, if, you, if you're running extremely bad, I've felt like that a few times. Uh, uh, but most of the time, I mean, overall, uh, I should be thankful for poker, obviously, and that uh, I uh, should make me feel good because it gave me a very unique opportunity to not have to work for a lot of money and to do something that I really enjoy for lots of money and have like a unique lifestyle, things like that. So poker mostly should make me feel pretty good. Uh, and it also, of course, feels really good to win. <laughs> <laughs> That's a competitive streak. Uh, Daniel, thanks for joining us. Really appreciate your time. Uh, my name is Daniel Cates. I am high stakes poker. <laughs>